Welcome to the Wild Wealth Way. This podcast is powered by the team at Wild Wealth Management Group, an award-winning financial services firm that provides comprehensive retirement, investment, real estate, insurance, legal, and tax planning services all under one roof. In each episode, professionals from the firm and our trusted partners will delve into topics ranging from retirement and the stock market to tax planning and insurance. We will even assist getting your kids into college and help get it funded. Welcome to the Wild Wealth Way. My name is Jackie Yoder, the CEO of Wild Wealth Management Group. I'm joined today with Curtis Bretzman. He is one of our financial advisors. He's located in our Glendale location, but I believe you also travel sometimes to the other offices in Tempe. And obviously he is here today with us in Scottsdale. And so we just wanted to welcome you to the Wild Wealth Way podcast. And just thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you, um, thank you. Curtis did join us in March of 2012. Prior to working with Wild Wealth, he uh, worked with several large investment firms that focused on investment consulting and advisement. Um, Curtis, welcome again. And tell us a little bit, uh, where were you prior to Wild Wealth? I can't believe it's been nine years already. <laughs> Holy cow. Time flies. Yeah, I Funny had. having fun. <laughs> yes, I love it. Um, I had a amazing job at Charles Schwab. Okay. Yep. And so Charles Schwab, they have it a huge location down on Twenty Fourth, and it was a, a great, a great experience. And so, in two thousand and eight, two thousand nine, in that time period, they went through a complete, uh, like everybody did, yeah. shutdown with the whole bunch of crisis. And so they laid off our entire team. And so I got the cool opportunity to go find another gig. Okay. All right. Well, tell us how, how did you find Wild Wealth? How did you come about joining us? So when I, um, so when that happened, I had the opportunity to, to go out and find uh, the job and the company that I wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. And so it was neat because I knew exactly after working with that company for so long, you know exactly what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. So I wanted a company that was focused on being more active and more intentional about uh, wealth management mm-hmm. and not very not as passive, and then to be have a more of a holistic planning. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I interviewed like 22 places, and so I was really intentional about. You're one of those, that. huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so when we walked in and, and met with Trevor, it was it was definitely different. Right. They had a, a CPA and a mortgage expert right there in house. Mm-hmm. And so it was apparent. All right. This is different, different type of place. Mm-hmm. And then I, I had the opportunity to get work. And that's where my passion really got lit to this place. It's, it's pretty special. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit, too, because you have quite a few clients even in New Mexico and you used to travel there. Tell us kind of a little bit about that, how that came about. Yeah. So. Um, Wild Wealth is, has really made their name for not only on the asset management, really, but before that, it's really about the education that goes into asset management and, and really empowering people. Whether you have hundred bucks in your four hundred one k or hundred thousand in your four hundred one k, to really be empowered on, on what's going on, on, on how that those uh, decisions affect you, and then uh, how does that how do you bring that all together for your asset management? And so um, back in the day, Bill Wild and Trevor really got their name on education. And so we have a, a large specialty uh, clients in, in CenturyLink and a lot of big uh, Fortune 500 type companies. And so uh, as, a, as a part of that, we go in there and manage their 401ks. And so we have a lot of clients in the whole Southwest, mm-hmm. Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, California. And it really goes around this idea of managing people's 401ks, mm-hmm managing the retirement assets, uh, helping them produce an income after retirement, and, and then um, giving them that holistic planning that goes along with that. Well, and I think that's so important because I know I came from a large Fortune 500 company and you know a lot of people don't even know that they have that option to actually have an advisor yeah. manage their 401k, right? Everyone just puts it away yeah. and they're like, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, I tell them it's like the best kept secret at their companies right. because there are HR departments really are their hands are tied and they can't give them recommendations on what to invest in mm-hmm. uh, or, or or how much they should be investing. And so when we can come alongside them and, and show them some of the great tools that their company offers, it's it's a light bulb moment. And it's really neat to see those experiences come alive. People walk away with a portfolio that's really going to be able to sustain them all the way throughout retirement. It's it's a great 
it's a great experience for for me as a advisor because that's my passion and obviously for them yeah no i agree um so tell me what it was like working with your clients and working here at wild wealth during the <laughs> pandemic <laughs> the last year has what a crazy crazy year mm -hmm. from the elections the pandemic and um you know, going back to my days at Schwab, it was very, we always did business this way, right? We always had these type of meetings. We always had this type of ex client experience. And it was an eye-opening experience for me, not just on the on the pandemic side, but on the client experience side, right? When we could say, wait a second, we don't have to have a client come to the office. We can do it over Zoom. We can do it over FaceTime. Uh, and so now... I'm having clients that are working from home all over the country that are saying, hey, I need help with my 401k. Can you help me out? Uh, and so that's a really cool experience because it takes our ability to, to take that uh, that planning and give them to them on, that, on the platform that they can work from. So it becomes much more productive for us. And frankly, uh, it really gives them more of the tools to get where they need to be. Uh, I, I got to tell you, on a really – personal side, it's been really sweet to, uh, I've always known the clients, uh, we've been really tight with our clients. It's, it's it, it is a, more of like a, a close relationship than you get at Fidelity or Schwab or Vanguard, but it's been very sweet to have those conversations where clients say, hey, Curtis, I'm just calling to check in on you. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and that's been, um, it's been it's touching to, to go through that with families and, and, um, and uh, there's been some serious illnesses in our in our practice, and, and so to, to go through that with them, it's been really uh, trying and tough time, but it's been a beautiful time in the same, in the same way. Yeah. Are you mostly still doing calls, Zooms with your clients currently? Do you have some that are like, no, I want to come back in office? You know, for the most part, clients I have found were so busy uh, doing their life right that, that it was hard for them to come into the office and so for them to actually hop on zoom oh it's been great experience yeah. for them and so i feel like it's kind of like a, a new chapter in, our, in my practice of of giving them that way to connect and so um no i'm not back to where i was i'm only about 15 back 15 percent back seeing people in person yeah. and i'm not sure if i think in every area of our world of our economy People are rethinking the way that they do office space and real estate, and so and, and similar to us, it might we might never get back to 100 percent where we were, and that's that's okay. That's, yeah, that's the beautiful thing about. I think it'll be uh, very hybrid. Yeah, yeah, going forward. Yeah, it, yeah. It'll, it'll be, and that's the way that our whole community is going nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's more of that virtual experience. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. No, it is. It is definitely interesting. Uh, tell us about your cute little family. We want to hear about them. <laughs> your daughter uh, is amazing. Yes. Um, yes. But yes, tell us about your family, how they're doing, how yeah. how your kids were even through the pandemic. Uh, um, so I have twins that are 11 years old, boy and girl, yep. and they cannot be more different. <laughs> my son is into Minecraft. My daughter is uh, loves pitching and fast pitch, pitch softball and volleyball and every sport you can think of and see my little social butterfly and then Cole's baby boy he's he's nine now and he is definitely going to be a big big man when he gets older <laughs> he is built but um you know a couple months ago a couple months a couple weeks ago my father passed away yeah and um and throughout this pandemic uh, it's we had the opportunity to maybe slow down and do life different, mm -hmm. um, doing homework and doing school over Zoom and and, and getting more intentional. But um, through his passing, I saw this quote on a, on a wall. It says, if you want to be in the memories of your children tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. Mm -hmm. And that idea of, of being intentional today so that you can have that relationship that you want down the road, it made me appreciate my dad even more, mm -hmm. right, of how he was just so uh, intentional in my life when I was growing up. Um, and and for us to have those amazing memories when he's gone, and so you know, it just reinforces this idea that we have to. I don't care what whether you're working at a telephone company or Wild Wealth or what career you're in, you got to have that intentional balance in life of.
family and work. And, and so it's been a beautiful time this past year of mm -hmm. that's kind of silver lining in this whole pandemic yeah. just saying, all right, well, it's, like, it's not the end of the world. We have to be healthy. We have to be smart, mm -hmm. but we also get to enjoy the important things in life. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. beautiful. It was nice to uh, take a step back and have a little more quality time with uh, with the kids through all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I love having impromptu water plume fights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really was very good on yeah. that level. Yeah. Um, it was a little trying at yeah, times. Homeschooling was a little, uh, you know, yeah. 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 But other than that, it was good. <laughs> um, so on April 28th, um, you will be hosting a webinar on social security and that's going to be playing, um, at noon or 6 PM. You can go on our website, wildwealth.com and to our events tab and go on there and you can register for whichever time works best for you. Um, and so the topic is going to be social security. Tell us a little bit about why you chose that subject to actually speak on. It is definitely a big topic. Um, so a personal story here, um, when, uh, when my mom passed away eight years ago, I remember I, I would have lost a big bet because <laughs> she had definitely was in our family was the healthy one. She would get up and go hike Papago mountain every Saturday morning. Like I would have bet that she would have lived to 110. Outlived everyone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, and so from a textbook definition, you should not take social security early, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you're, healthy, you should wait because that's when you get more money in your social security check. Yeah. And so we would go back and forth. And so finally, uh, she waited until full retirement age. And then um, she passed away 17 months later. And she only got social security for 17 months. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was a, an eye-opening experience, right, of, of saying that this decision of taking social security sometimes it's not just a financial decision. Right. It's a practical decision. So for every family, it's going to be different. And so, and, and also for every individual, it's going to be different, mm -hmm. uh, even inside the household. And so it's important that they make that own decision, but I really have to give them the tools and, and the resources to help them make a well-educated decision mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you only can make that decision once. And so mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, to be that resource so that they make a really wise decision and then they can go enjoy retirement instead of yeah. having to always have the doubts about maybe I should have done it different, mm -hmm. would it could have, you know? I think it as a whole, and I'm sure you see this too, people, um, they tend to focus on what's in their portfolio and they don't really see the importance of the social security aspect of it as yeah. much and the timing behind that. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Um, so why for the decision for is so important to each client, can you give us like different scenarios of like certain clients you've worked with and decisions that some have made versus others? Yeah. So, uh, when you take out social security, it's going to lock in that dollar amount for the rest of your month, your life, right? You might get some small increases for inflation every year, but for the most part, it's locked in for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. whether you wait and have that dollar amount increase or whether you take it early, it's going to decrease obviously, but it not only affects you, but also could affect your spouse. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have a, a, a spouse that is retiring and they take out social security and then you want to take yours out early and you're taking half of that person's, uh, it's going to get cut in half again or by 25% again. And so mm -hmm. that's a, that's a big difference. And so uh, it's important to, to go through and use some of our tools, use some of our resources to say, all right, what is the impact of my my entire financial plan and not just look at social security by itself? Right. And I think the other part of that is that on the back end of retirement, if one spouse passes away, well, they're going to have that income adjusted because you're going to be the higher of the two. Right. And so we'll have to do some planning to say what happens if one spouse dies prematurely mm -hmm. and, and what is the impact? And, and and sometimes it's it's important to take the emotion out of that mm -hmm. and, and to use some financial tools to say, okay, well, what would be the hit to the portfolio? Would I run out of money? Mm -hmm. And then to, to go through that very logically. And so that's where 
uh, it's kind of morbid. That's where it gets fun. Yeah. Right. Is actually say, listen, you're good. You're right. You're good. Take your social security. Go live retirement. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the fun part. Yeah. Is we go through that experience with people. Yeah, I agree. So, what are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about social security? You know, through all this um, process, a lot of baby boomers, for the most part, yeah, they're going to be fine. Right? They, they've had some of them have pensions, some of them have uh, social security, or all of them have social security, some of them have retirement savings, mm -hmm. but they have different sources of income. I think one of the uh, kind of evolutions that we're starting to see is that some of the younger families they don't have pensions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're going to rely on their, their retirement savings and social security. And then if you even take it down to our generation, um, I, I believe that we're going to get it, but it's going to get taxed so heavily, they might as not have given it to us at all. Right. Yep. Uh, and so I think one of the misconceptions is that when it was originally came out, uh, it was intended to be a safety net, an insurance policy, if you will, for people that have a catastrophe and they don't have any other savings. Mm -hmm. Right. But nowadays people view it as their retirement. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that, that's a disaster right. uh, scenario. Right? And, and so I think we we as planners have to maybe like, I don't think that we do that enough is, is you know, sound the red light, uh, uh, sound the horn of saying, warning, warning, you're not, we're not on saving enough for retirement to our younger clients mm -hmm. because it's not going to be enough to, to provide their needs on the back end of retirement. Right. So that's something that I feel like that's, we as industry, we have to start having a larger conversation about just the savings rate in general for our generation and younger. Yeah, no, it's true. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get Social Security. It's yeah, fine. Sure. You yeah. know, <laughs> and I'm going, I'm not, I'm never going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and so whenever you're um, kind of sitting down with people, how do you incorporate this conversation into your discussions with them, even younger people? Yeah, I think that. Um, every one of our clients now, we re, last year we rolled out uh, a new software called AdviceWorks. Mm -hmm. And so this tool is, is designed to be a, a, a hub, a, a resource so that all their assets can be found in one place. Mm -hmm. and, and it's powerful because so many people in our generation, they're not good at organizing, first of all. Mm -hmm. And so this is terrific because yeah. it has it pulls all that stuff together. So you have one place to see everything from something very high level of what's my when's my mortgage what's my mortgage balance right mm -hmm. to something very very simplistic like your family budget mm -hmm. but then on the back end it allows us to take that data and run it all the way throughout retirement mm -hmm. and to use some some very geeky formulas in it like inflation like rate returns mm -hmm. and, and to start to do some 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 financial planning around that uh, so then whether you're going on the doorstep of retirement or a, a young person is just starting out to say, am I on the right path? Mm -hmm. Do I need to make adjustments? Or, and then it can happen in our quarterly meetings. So then the conversation is bigger than just what is my rate of return? Right. Am I getting a good performance on my portfolio? Mm -hmm. But it's saying, hey, listen, I, I'm not on pace for retirement. Mm -hmm. and, and those conversations are, are, are so vital when you, can, when you can fix the situation. If you're way too late, then it's you can't really do too much. Right. Um, yeah. But and, and that's that's one of the best things that we've done over the past year is to bring some new tools to our yeah. clients and stuff. Uh, yeah, that like that snapshot of the picture is so helpful for people. Yeah. Yeah. I love advice works too. So <laughs> who would you encourage to watch your webinar? Um I just thought one other thing yeah. about the advice works. Yeah, it's a that's a complimentary tool that we have for, for anybody. Yeah. Um, and so even if you're um, not a client of ours, and, yeah. and even if you're, a, um, if you're a parent that wants to help educate your child about what's, uh, this would be a great resource to, to pass them. And so I view my clients as not the client, but as their household, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and help educate them so they can be financially savvy when they get inherit those proceeds. Mm -hmm. And so, I want to encourage you that that resource is there. So if um, it, you're more than welcome to, to request that for your friends and family, 
Uh, and so take advantage of that because that's a that comes a very powerful tool. Yeah. Um, and so going back to the um, to the webinar coming up, I think that obviously it's important for anybody uh, that's on the door doorstep of retirement. So I'd yeah. say five years or or, or less. Yeah. Uh, and so 58, 59, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's time for you to start to thinking about that conversation of when should I take this to security and, and then what are some implications of that decision? Yeah. And even the people that, you know, think about retiring early and all of that, yeah. like what does that look like for them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So is there anything else that we need to know about your webinar? Um, I know there's going to be lots of useful information that you're going to have in there. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, in, in preparation for this webinar and, and making it uh, a succinct experience for people, mm -hmm. you quickly realize there's so much information that you can't put into a 20, 25 minute webinar. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I guess the, the takeaway is that it's a very good uh, entry level kind of analysis on mm -hmm. what to, to look for. But I would encourage people to the next step after that is saying, okay, let's contact your advisor mm -hmm. um, and, and to start to, to put your situation into some financial tools, yeah. right? And so that you can have some very specific um, direction on, on your goals. And so then you can have specific questions that really kind of clarify some of those gray areas. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, um, just to remember, we have his webinar on April 28th. Like I said, it was at it's at noon and 6 p.m. And you can go on our website and register for that webinar. And I also just wanted to have um, a reminder for our 2Q volunteer project. We're working with Southwest Development in um, giving kids books and diapers and essentials like that. And the link is on our events page for that as well. Uh, if you would like to donate, it gets shipped straight to um, that foundation. And we just wanted to say thank you again for Curtis being on the Wild Wolf Way podcast today with me. So thank you for joining me. And uh, we look forward to the webinar. So see you next time. Thank you for joining the Wild Wealth Way. If you would like to meet with one of our trusted advisors, please go to www.wildwealth.com or call our office at 480-361-6203. You can find our show notes from today's show at www.wildwealth.com slash podcast.